Hey everyone, how's it going? If you don't know me, or if you're new to the channel, my name's Matt. I'm a worship leader in North Carolina. And uh, recently I started doing some like worship development videos. And the last one that I did about leading worship on electric guitar got a lot of great responses and uh, I got a lot of encouragement from you guys with that one. So thank you so much for the encouragement. I'm glad it was helpful to you. I wanted to take another opportunity to do a different type of video, uh, leading worship from acoustic guitar. And I realized like everybody for the most part leads worship from acoustic guitar so this video isn't gonna strike you as super unique from the beginning but what I wanted to look at today was a problem that I think a lot of worship leaders run into starting out and that's strumming patterns I remember when I first started out every song it seemed you just had this Right? Like every song had the same strumming pattern it seemed like. It was like a product of the mid-2000s. For some reason every song was that pattern. And uh, what I've noticed a lot of people do as I've had the chance over the years to develop different worship leaders and see them grow, a lot of worship leaders start out just only strumming that pattern because it seems to be the most natural pattern that comes to us and people never really intentionally break away from that sometimes. So today I wanted to look at seven different patterns that you can use when you're leading worship from acoustic guitar. Here we go. So the first one is the one we just talked about, which is your basic pattern. Uh, I don't want to downplay it because there actually is a time and a place for that. But that pattern is is your, your typical, um, you know, build my life by Pat Barrett. That song is a perfect example of that pattern. And in that song, it just works, you know. Worthy of every song we could ever sing, right? Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Da, da, da. So the emphasis is on the end. So the emphasis is pretty complex. You're emphasizing different E's and U's and A's of the 16th notes in that pattern. Um, but for whatever reason, it comes really natural to us. So we tend to overuse it, but there is a time and a place. I think it fits perfectly with a song like Build My Life. I think it fits perfectly with just particular worship songs that we hear. We're used to it. It uh, brings back a sort of nostalgia for us. So there's a time and a place, but it's not the only strumming pattern that exists. We can be more creative than that. So let's look at the second uh, strumming pattern I want to talk about today, which is a pattern that would put the emphasis on the two and the four. When I'm leading worship from acoustic, I like to think about what the kick drum and the snare drum are doing and how can I actually help emphasize that. So for example, the song Anchor has this sort of pattern on the two and four. In this particular instance, there's two different ways to do this pattern. There's one where uh, you're counting in 16th notes in a song like Anchor, and then there's another way to do it uh, in eighth notes. For now, let's look at the 16th notes. So a song like Anchor has this sort of swaying like two and four feeling. So uh, it goes something like this. Course. There is hope in the promise of the cross. You gave everything to save the world you love. So it has this like back and forth one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three. And so for that song, you actually need to strum in sixteenth notes. Um, a lot of times we get used to these like only eighth note strums, but that song is slow enough that you can strum in sixteenth notes. You double up your strumming and your basic strum is 
the big thing you do is just put emphasis on the two and the four. So um, I like to think about it when I do that in terms of low strings and high strings. So my low strings hit the one and the three of the measure. My high strings will hit the two and the four. So low, uh, low, high, low, high, low. Uh, that's just how I think about it. You could do it without thinking about low and high like that. Time and a place, not every song that fits either, right? But a song like Anchor, other songs that have that same sort of feel, even uh, Man of Sorrows from Hillsong as well. Man of Sorrows, Lamb of God. It's like this back and forth, like swaying, and it's exactly what the kick drum and the snare drum are doing. Kick, kick, kick snare, kick. So that kind of feel, you're not going to want to come in guns a-blazing with a... Uh... It just doesn't fit the song. Um, so that song is a good chance to break away from that strumming pattern. Now there's another way to do that pattern if you're in a song um, that you can't subdivide the 16th notes as much because it's faster. Uh, you can do sort of the, the two and the four emphasis still within eighth notes. So a good example of that is Living Hope by Phil Wickham. You can feel that two and four swing, especially in the instrumentals. It has that, you know, This time it's eighth notes, two and three and four and and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Same kind of swing. Uh, it's a straighter feel though because it's eighth notes. That's another great strumming pattern to do. So you can emphasize the two and four on on sixteenth notes, or you can do it on eighth notes. And that'll help support, you know, especially songs where the kick and the snare are really strong in that area. That'll help support your drummer. Um, because when you're leading worship from an acoustic guitar, you really become, in my opinion, you become more part of the rhythm section than anything else. And so, you know, that sort of clicking of the acoustic has a semblance of a shaker in the full mix of everything. And you're really helping the rhythm. You're helping accentuate certain parts of the rhythm scheme. So. Very important to be in sync with what your drummer is doing and not just come in with some crazy strumming pattern that doesn't match. So another uh, strumming pattern, sticking within 4-4 four, four time signature. After after that, we'll move on to, into some that you can do in 6-8 or 3-4. Uh, but within the 4-4 four, four time signature, there's also just like a straight down strum pattern that sometimes happens in faster songs. A good example of this is Christ is Risen by Matt Marr. A little bit of an older song, but most people know it. So when that when that piano hook comes in, sort of everybody everybody's paying attention to that. And it's the acoustics job to really get out of the way and just straight drive the song. Just a straight rhythm. So this would be just straight down strums on eighth notes. comes in Christ is risen from the dead trampling over death by death come awake come away come and rise up from the grave Christ is risen from the dead we are one with him again so just straightforward no emphasis sometimes that can really help drive a song when I do that particular pattern it helps me not to hit a bunch of the high strings. So it helps me not to be like, Christ is risen from the dead, trampling over death by death. It just like adds unnecessary stuff when you do that. So I think it drives better and feels better uh, for a straight strum if you're just sort of hanging out on those lower strings.
I'm sure there's tons more in 4-4 that you can think of. Uh, I could challenge you to just be creative and come up with patterns that are not just your standard patterns. But that's it. Those are the three I wanted to focus on with a 4-4 time signature. So now let's move into a 6-8 or a 3-4 time signature. Sometimes those can be confusing which one it is, but we'll, we'll lump them all together and we'll just uh, show a couple different patterns that can work in uh, any scenario where you're counting the three or counting the six. So the first one, it's kind of weird, but basically you're putting the emphasis on the one and in the and of two. And a good example of this would be Oh Come to the Altar by Elevation Worship. Everybody knows that guitar riff when it comes in is just. Everybody knows that sort of feel, um, but it's hard to articulate what exactly you're doing. All you're doing is you're saying So if you just count a three over and over, one and two and three and one and two and three and one, you're putting the emphasis on the one and then the and of two. Yeah, that one's probably, that one's almost like the generic 441, but in in a 3-4 or 6-8 version, everybody kind of feels that naturally and knows it. There's a couple other ones I want to talk about as well though. So one of those is putting the emphasis on the three. So a lot of uh, hymns or modern hymns or sort of, you know, older feeling songs, even some like Irish feeling songs, um, they can put the emphasis on the three, uh, especially older hymns. So like we know this in um, Amazing Grace, we know this in like How Deep the Father's Love for Us. Um, you have that slow driving emphasis on the three, so it goes, uh, or on the one and the three. So. So one, two, three, one, two, three. How deep the Father's love for us, two, three. How vast beyond a measure, three. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one. Um, pretty slow sort of driving classic feel with that but emphasis on the one emphasis on the three you can eighth note strum or a quarter note strum still do the emphasis and it feels roughly the same amazing grace the same way amazing grace how sweet the sound so it's almost like that uh blues feel you know if you think about it in terms of you know, old school stuff. Two. You know, the last one I want to talk about today is similar, but uh, it's focused more on a straight 6 8. So, a lot of older hymns do the same thing when they're in 6 8, they have a certain feel, and it's usually when the emphasis is on the 5. So uh, that would feel like something like this. Um, we feel that in songs like In Christ Alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. So 
Sometimes it's slower. That <laughs> in Christ alone is usually not that fast. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength. And that one, um, you know, if you count it out, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One. And that usually fits well with the snare. Um, those sort of six eight songs like that, almost always the snare is doing something that's that that's emphasizing the one and the five. One, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. So the more the acoustic can support those rhythms, the better off you'll be. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Um, there are way more strumming patterns that are out there. There's way more that I find myself doing sort of randomly at different times. And so I encourage you guys to find your own strumming patterns, um, find ways to be creative in the song, but always find ways primarily to support what is going on in the song. There's also, you know, the aspect of do what feels natural to you. Since you are leading, if you're leading from an instrument and singing at the same time, uh, you don't want to try any stuff that's like just so complex that you can't sing and you fumble over your words while you're doing it. Do patterns that feel natural to you, but also patterns that can help support the band, help support the lyrics, and help support the overall feel of the song. The last thing people want from their worship leader is for them to go rogue on some crazy strumming pattern. That's how bands end up rushing, not listening to the click, or if you don't use a click, not listening to the drummer, and uh, getting off beat, getting way off track because um, I've seen it over and over again. There's no need to go crazy with strumming patterns. Keep it simple, but keep it creative as well. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. Do you enjoy this kind of video? If you do, please let me know in the comments. Let me know the types of videos maybe that you would like to see in the comments. And uh, if you don't lead from acoustic, if you're leading from electric guitar or some, make sure to check out my other video on leading worship from electric guitar. I'll stick it up here in the little blinky thing. Give it a watch. Give this channel a subscribe if you enjoy it, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much.